the learning community, let's talk curriculum. This is such an overwhelming uh, topic for so many people entering the world of homeschooling. And so let's start off by reframing that. And instead of thinking of it as curriculum, let's think of it as your child's learning path. So I'm going to take you through some of the most important considerations and this is going to be very individual from family to family. There is no cookie cutter and that is the beauty of homeschool. So the first thing that I want to encourage you to do is to ask yourself some questions. I'm going to go through these questions today. Before I do, I want to ask you to share this information with others that will find it helpful. Help me get this information out to as many families as possible by clicking that like button. And of course, subscribe if you haven't already, because I provide free learning every single week based in research. So let's get going. The first thing I want you to think about is what are your goals? What are the needs of your child and your family? So if you have a child that is uh, having some special considerations, a learning challenge, a learning disability, then you may want to consider a curriculum that includes components that support that. For example, if your child has dyslexia, a program that utilizes an uh, Orton uh, Gillingham approach for writing and spelling and reading may be very useful for you. So a lot of information can be really found online and asking those questions, what programs support or use strategies that support this specific developmental need? So that's number one is what are my child's needs? What are my family's needs? What is our lifestyle? Are we going to be road schooling? Are we running a family business, homesteading? Are we going to uh, soccer practice? Are we mostly at home? You really want to think about those type of things. And of course, are you looking for a secular or faith-based curriculum? That is also another consideration. So. Begin by asking yourself those questions, get that in line. If you've already decided that and have those things squared away, then you're one step closer. And even if you have selected a program, reviewing it, because not every program is going to have every single thing. There are always things that we as uh, the family and the parent can really bring to the program and integrate. So I want to walk you through that today. And at the end, um, I'm going to culminate with really the most critical piece of advice for pulling this all together. So hang in there till the end. And really want to encourage you to consider is the play-based nature of learning for children, especially in the early years kindergarten particularly. So children's play is their work. You really want to encourage uh, play-based learning because not only is that uh, making connections in their brain, but it is actually building muscles, strengthening muscles they need. Uh, climbing on jungle gyms is actually helping to wire their brain and build core strength. So all of these things is, is so important and fascinating to think about. It, their play is their learning and that's the best but also the most challenging part of it too at times. So that's something to consider as well. Um, making sure that you allow them building sets. Those things are by far some of the most important learning that children can do early on in their more formative years in preschool, toddler years, and into kindergarten. Even into first, second grade age group, we love to encourage that. I love to encourage that because I truly believe that it creates a more well-rounded and it's holistic uh, for the brain development. The next consideration is to make sure, and this plays into what I just talked about, but you want it to be developmentally appropriate. 
And while there is a spectrum of reading development, and um, if you're interested in hearing a little bit more about that, I've linked the video uh, I made on that topic in the description, so you can go and check that out. But um, there's a spectrum of reading development. We know some children are ready really early, uh, but on average, children are ready to read, uh, if we were to look at it from the perspective of a bell curve. Uh, research really shows that most children, the highest uh, amount of children, uh, percentage of children are ready at about six and seven years of age. So really making sure that this is developmentally appropriate, listening to your child or paying attention to your child's cues of what they are ready for, that's going to play into what you use with your curriculum and um, what curriculum that you choose. So um, again, you wanna make sure that you're not um, pushing something that we feel that they need to be doing at a certain age. We want to make sure that they are indeed ready for that because if children are uh, put into a situation where they're learning something too soon for them, um, they don't understand that there's a developmental spectrum and so the message that they can take away from that is that they're not capable. We want to make sure that our children feel capable and of course we will have our ups and downs and you might try something and realize nope they weren't ready for that. That's okay. That's going to happen. Certainly don't uh, beat yourself up over that uh, at all. That happens to everybody as we walk through this journey and this path of home education, homeschooling. Um, of teaching children in general. So by all means, please do not be afraid to try something. You think that they're ready and they're showing signs of being ready for reading um, or that's in the curriculum, you wanna give it a try, by all means. But do be aware and uh, uh, in tune to the signals that they're giving you uh, to make sure that they truly are ready. And again, there's a spectrum uh, from about age three uh, to typically age seven, but also into age eight. And we say reading by nine, because that is when they begin to read so that they can learn rather than learning to read. So that's a little uh, educational cliche, but it holds true. The next thing I want to, con um, to consider uh, when I'm looking at curriculum is I want to make sure that it's very hands-on. Less worksheets for the younger grades or ages. Uh, if they like worksheets, then by all means use them. Do pay attention to what your child enjoys. If they love worksheets and they love tracing letters, then that's perfect. Um, but again, it's not unusual for that to not be the best vehicle for learning at a young age, the more hands-on, the better. And again, remember we're building those connections in the brain and children are strengthening the muscles in their hands. They may not be ready to correctly hold a pencil yet. So we want to be building strength in their muscles. We want to be building strength in their arms um, because we don't think about it. Sometimes we take it for granted, but that actually plays into it. Their core strength, uh, so that they can sit correctly and comfortably as they uh, enter into more of academic work when they're you know older. So those things are super important. We do not want to overlook that. Um, when looking at the reading readiness aspect, reading readiness is such a huge part of the early childhood uh, component. And again, like I say always, children's play is their work. So we want to make sure that there is a lot of uh, ph uh, phonemic awareness and phonics play with words. We call it word play, and it builds their ability to recognize patterns in language. You want to make sure that there is a phonological awareness or and not or, but and, phonemic awareness component. And if the curriculum that you've chosen doesn't have that, not a problem. I've linked some videos below. I can help you cover that. Um, don't be afraid to supplement for sure. I have some great resources here for free 
based in research and my experience of teaching hundreds of kids to read. So I encourage you to take a look at that. Um, but definitely, if the curriculum that you've chosen isn't uh, covering phonemic awareness, uh, remember, phonics and letter sounds alone is not enough for children to become um, not readers, but decoders. When they're able to blend words, they really do need to have that phonemic awareness. And if you're unsure about phonemic awareness and what that is, I have a video I've linked in the description. So check that out. And it gives you a, a lot of great information about what phonemic awareness is and why it's important. All right, children also need to have a rich language, and I talked about this with the word games, but nursery rhymes. Did you know that uh, children that come into a early childhood setting, uh, when they come into that early childhood setting, if they have about six, seven nursery rhymes um, in their repertoire, even a couple less than that, um, they tend to do better and, and be more ready than their peers, their contemporaries, that don't have that uh, bonus. So the, and the reason why is because it's building vocabulary, it's building um, recognition kind of, of uh, rhyming words, and they're recognizing certain uh, patterns in our language. We call it like the syntax of language and, and the way that words are placed in uh, sentences. So all of that is really foundational for children and we wanna make sure that we integrate that in. And remember, reading is more than just blending words. Um, that's called decoding, and I just mentioned that earlier, but uh, it's, so, it's so easy to get hung up on whether or not our children are blending words and kind of freak out if they're not. But reading is so much more than that. So if your child is not yet ready to blend words, and even if they are for sure, we wanna make sure that we are covering those activities and those thought processes that help to make them truly readers. Because reading is not just blending words, that's decoding, that's a part of reading. Reading is being able to decode those words being able to read with expression and also to interpret and process that, uh, that text, make connections to it, make predictions, all of that very rich uh, connecting to text. We want to instill that in children and the great news is they don't have to decode before we do that. We can do that when we read aloud to them uh, and we call it think alouds. We can uh, show them our thought processes. Like, I wonder what's going to happen. I noticed that this character did this. I know when I, you know, feel this way, um, that this is how I handle it. I wonder what this character is going to do. And you're modeling for them all of those great things uh, that can come before they are decoding and you are building that for them and they will be all the more ready. The next thing I cannot emphasize enough is experiential knowledge. Our children, when they, especially in their formative years, are super, super sponges. They are absorbing the world and we don't have to take them expensive places to do this. But just talking about what we see in our world, not always, sometimes we need periods of rest, but being able to engage them in conversations, giving them describing words, really enriching their vocabulary, finding opportunities that fit within the budget. Um, there's lots of free things that can be done too. Um, and those things really build experiential knowledge and that goes back to what I just talked about, being able to connect to text because the more experiences a child has, in their um, lives when they come into a, a, a learning setting, whether that's in the home or classroom or wherever, the more likely they are to be able to connect to the text that they read. That is so important. And it's building so many beautiful connections in their brain. And we wanna do that. Our children's brains are ripe for for growing and, and enriching their their lives for the rest of their life. Um, next, I'd like to share with you um, a really important tip. 
please remember that although ultimately there is an outcome, we're raising um, human beings and we all have our own um, goals and vision for our child. But at the same time, it's a process and it comes over a long period of time. So don't be afraid to supplement. Don't be afraid to mix and match your curriculum. Utilize other resources. Again, check out the links in my description um, here because I share a lot of resources for really uh, helping children utilize sounds and blending. So those are great resources and completely free. And make the curriculum truly yours, truly your child's or your family's. And there's the three R's of homeschooling. So I'm gonna leave you with this. This is my most important out of all of this that I've shared today. The most important thing, the three R's of homeschool is to reassess. So you reflect and reassess if something hasn't gone right that day, it's not the end of the world, it's not over. I might feel like it, might feel like, oh goodness, it's never gonna get better, but it's okay. Take a step back, reassess what didn't work about it, what can I do different, um, what would work better for my child. I did this all the time as a teacher. I did this all the time as a parent and really, things not going right, it might be, it, well, typically it's par for the course. And so just reassess, take some time to reflect on what didn't work, regroup, maybe you need to take a couple days off, um, and then reset and try it again. If it didn't work the way that you did it, it might be a sign that that won't work or it could be a sign that maybe it just wasn't the right time, maybe, uh, people were hungry or tired. It was maybe, you know, something in the day was off. So of course those are considerations too. Uh, but for sure reset and try it again in a different way. If they didn't, um, if it didn't work for them the previous way, try something different. And so with that, I leave you with just the encouragement that you can have the confidence to teach your child. You are their first teacher from the moment they are born. And um, I encourage you to share any questions you have in the comments below. I love to be a resource for families who are on this path of educating their child. And with that, I'll see you next time when I teach to your child's super learning powers, one child at a time.